Tonight, a man waves whilst wearing a flight suit. I get stuck in traffic. And a wise guy gets lost around our track. Hello, hello and welcome. Now, what we have here is a super sedan car. A car used by those who like the idea of practicality and speed. However, the one thing that they do tend to struggle with is off-roading. So if you want a car that ticks all the boxes of practicality, speed and off-roading, you'll be looking for an SUV. So I've been out to test the Obey Ricotto, just to see how good an SUV really is. Welcome to what the Green Party would call hell. What we have here is the Obey Ricotto. Not exactly the prettiest car ever made, but then again, I can't imagine the looks was something that Obey really focused on when making this car. In fact, I'm pretty sure that if you squint hard enough or get rather drunk and look at this vehicle, it somewhat resembles the looks of a turtle. Now, admittedly, the Ricotto is an all-rounded good alternative to the most popular and more expensive SUVs in the game. With a price tag of only $85,000, that makes it over $100,000 cheaper than the Huntley S, meaning you'd have more than enough dollar to spend on upgrades to your car. However, the upgrades would mainly be focused on performance parts, as sadly the Ricotto doesn't have many visual upgrades to add on to it. But then again, why would you want to add more weight onto a car that already weighs around two and a half tons? Now, in all fairness, this car does have a good balance of what an SUV should have. It has a great balance between its on-road and off-road performance. I tell you what, let me show you. You put your foot down and it really does shift for something that weighs the size of a planet. It doesn't half move. <laughs> Look at the train to the left of us, it's being obliterated. Oh, here comes a jump! This thing, this thing is good fun. Now the reason that it's so quick is thanks to its powerful engine with its high speed transmission and the biggest factor, the all wheel drive layout, which seriously helps maximize the potential of this vehicle when the terrain gets tough. And compared to similar SUVs such as the Baller, the ride in the Ricotto is much more stiff, giving it a much more responsive feel when it comes to cornering. On the other hand, the acceleration is somewhat average. Once you get to a speed and put your foot down, it really does shift, but moving from the line, it's quite difficult. You see, with so much weight to haul about, it really struggles to get going. But the speed is a slight crumb of discomfort compared to what the worst feature of this vehicle is, or should I say, the lack of feature, the brakes. They're non-existent. It's as if Obey decided that pixie dust and sheer luck is what you need to stop a two and a half ton vehicle. It's safe to say the Ricotto has some of the worst brakes in the SUV class, which worries me for what I have planned next. You see, whilst I drive it around sandy shores on its road and dust tracks, how does this car actually handle when the going gets tough? I mean, what would happen if we were to take this car and drive it on a rally course? So, we've seen the Ricotto on the road, but now it's time to actually put it to the test on what it says is its home ground, off-road. And I'm joined here with my good old co-presenter, Ryan. Hello there. And what he's going to be doing is going up against me in that. What? Wh why? Why not? Look at it. It's beautiful. No, not the guy. The helicopter. Oh. Uh, well, it was cheap on Craigslist, so... Now, I should explain to the viewers, the challenge is that Ryan will be uh, piloted by our, our lovely friend, Joe, to 4,000 feet. And then... At 4,000 feet, he's going to be jumping out and parachuting all the way down to the cafe on the side of North Chumash Highway. Once we get there, the first one to arrive at the car park must shoot a flare into the sky, and the first person who has their flare to land back on the ground is the winner. And so, at exactly 12 minutes past six, the race began. Go, 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 go! Get the car! Power! Yes, speed, off we go. Let's put the lights on, it's starting to get quite dark. Okay, as Tom previously mentioned, I will be going up to 4,000 feet with my trusty co-pilot Joe here, and Tom is already making his way through the canyon. So for the first half, he does have the advantage. However, I've got a good feeling that as soon as I jump out of the helicopter, I will definitely have speed on my hands. Now those for you rooting against the Ricotto, Think about this. I'm the one getting the advantage here. He's got to fly the 4,000 feet until he jumps out. And then gravity's got to do all the work. I've got a car, an engine, 
force powers and gravity all on my side. I'm pretty sure that's how science works. Whoa! Bikers! Apparently Joe's a mute. Okay, we're nearing up to the uh, halfway point. When I get to this corner, they should be around three to 4,000 feet. That's when he's going to be jumping out. This is where I need to absolutely boot it and save as much time as possible. And to no surprise, he was up 4,000 feet. And we're off. Okay, so now that I'm finally moving, I will definitely, most certainly, hopefully have speed on my hands. And as it looks like for now, my prayers have not been answered because I do not see uh, a load of black flames where Tom has been engulfed in. Right, breaking for this. Whoa, massive slide there. I thought it was going to spin out. Just trying to look up for Tom now. I don't see him yet, so that's either a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not quite sure. This is where I'm going to have to lose all my speed that I've gained all the time. It's going to be shattered if I bugger this bit up. Alright, so there is the uh, there is the, there is the cafe. We'll be pulling our parachute as late as possible. Not going to get distracted by the view, we're coming up to the road. Oh, there he is! There he is! Gonna Land! Cross, cross, gonna cross, cross, cross. Okay. Quickly, quickly. Oh my god, there he is. Take the parachute there he is. off. Get out the car. Take the, the parachute cup. off. Get the flare. Shoot up. Up. All right, flare's in the air. Oh, whose flare's going to hit the ground first? Whose lands first? This is where the real winner is decided. Who's this going to be? Uh-oh. Where I'm is it? This is close. Where are the flares? That is too close to call, I think. <laughs> I think we'll have, to, uh, have a look. Who won? Oh my days. So, hang on, Tom. Two things I need to ask you. Go on. Firstly, who the hell won that race? Ah, now I'm glad you asked that because uh, what we've got here is the um, extremely slow motion replay. So we're going to cut to that. Let's have a look. So the flares in the sky coming down. Ready? And there we go. See? <laughs> I won. First place. But, but hang on. I just still got one more question. Um, go on. You were supposed to test out how good an SUV really is. And I did. But you were meant to compare it to a sedan car. Well, the helicopter's got four seats, I guess. Well, no, but... No, anyway, it's now time to put a subscriber in our small car. Now, my guest tonight is mostly known for slamming and drifting vehicles on GTA 5. Well, whatever that means. Uh, yes, so, my guest today, if you haven't already guessed, is GTA Wise Guy. So, I took him down to the test track to see just what he could do in the almighty Declasa Asia. What do you think? Did a classer a seer? Well, uh, I think a donkey could be faster, to be honest. Probably so, but yeah, um, yeah let's see. Um, let's see how fast you can uh, drive our donkey around the track. <laughs> right. Okay. So, are you ready to do the first lap? No, but let's go anyway. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> right. Three, two, one, go. And as it turns out, he wasn't joking. Wait. Wait, where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> We've gone the wrong way. We've, right, straight on. GT Wise oh, Guy fuck. is the first person to get lost around the track, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so for people who don't really know who you are, what exactly do do you do on the YouTubes? Well, I do a variety of things, including, well, I report a lot of the news to do with GTA and Need for Speed. Mainly the stuff that interests me, I don't do a lot of news. Um, yeah. I also do... A lot of drifting montages. Uh, well, I try to. At least. You're not going to try and drift this on the track, are you? <laughs> no. This is front wheel drive. Front wheel drive. It's not going to work. That's and okay. it's too slow. <laughs> and I also do a lot of builds on Need for Speed and GTA. Um, a lot of showcases when new cars come out. Um, occasionally GTA mods, and a lot of builds on Need for Speed, just on the cars on there. So, GTA car history. We'll move on to that. What was your first car my first car which i was actually looking forward to quite a lot before the game come out was a serrano so it's the based on the mercedes sls and crossed with the f type okay i don't know why but i had that car for a long time it was quite ricey it was yellow <laughs> it had a massive black wing on it it was a convertible and it also had like those weird like circular like five spoke circular wheels that would have like the coloured sort of tip on them I suppose like the outside face okay. they were yellow 
and they, I had the atomic wheels as well. It was pretty nasty. <laughs> okay, so first car was a Serrano, but your favourite car on GTA? Uh, the Banshee. Really? Because uh, the mid-drive speed boost on that, um, I don't know if you know what it is, but yeah, it, you just yeah. hit the handbrake just as you're getting into third gear. And you just boost Because that last rage, you can use it for drag racing. It's ridiculously quick. I'm not a big um, fan of it. Really? I, 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 there's something about it that's never really clicked. I like the stock Banshee. Oh, you want to, the 900 R's? That's where I, I don't know. There's something about it that just looks a bit. Uh, well, the 900 R isn't great for drifting anymore, but but the original yeah. one is. It was good okay. at first, but then Rockstar patched it. And so, with the four practice laps complete, it was time for the real thing. Okay, and we're off. Good start off the line. A little bit of wheel spin. Off the line. No wheels, Bill. Coming into the first corner. Taking it tight into Chicago. Another tight line round there, carrying a lot of speed. The lean is real. <laughs> into Hammerhead. Uh, Back end, stepping out. That was a heavy ass corner. More speed. Right, carrying a oh, lot of no speed. Lifting, no lifting, no lifting. <laughs> Coming into second to last corner, clipping the grass into Gambon, keeping it tight, and across the line! Okay, so, thoughts? Uh, not great. Some of my lines were pretty bad. The average time oh. is 58 seconds around then, and I can confirm you are quicker than the average time. But am I quicker than Nick? Nick was 57 point three top to tom was 57.2 so i'm sweating gda wise guy your lap time was a 57 <gasps> point one six no but i'm trying to th there, there's obviously a silver lining in the cloud i'm pretty sure you're the fastest person around the track who slams vehicles yeah. how's that i think God, there's yeah. something there for everyone <laughs> um now again, I would just like to thank GTA Wise Guy for coming onto the show, and I would also like to thank everyone for all the emails. I've started messaging back to people who will be coming onto the show very shortly, so keep an eye out for a reply message off me sometime soon. Now, a few weeks ago, whilst in a party chat, the three of us inevitably started having a heated debate. Yeah. You see, I believe that the quickest way to get to Bolito Bay from the city would be to use a car... On the highway. Well, no, because isn't it obvious the quickest way to get there would be by a plane? Because you don't have to deal with traffic or pedestrians. Or you could just use one of the most overlooked modes of transport, a boat, which most of the time costs half as much as both your vehicles together. Anyway, the producers told us to put our money where our mouths were. So, we chose our preferred vehicles and were told to meet at a dockyard near Vespucci Beach. Now sit back, because this is a good one. I've got this, the Super Diamond. I believe this is the fastest vehicle to get to Polito Bay. It's just the most stylish, the most comfortable, the fastest. You'd be an idiot to choose any other form of transport to get to the top of the map. No, 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 no. You, sir, have it all wrong. If you want to get to Polito Bay quickly and in style, you need a boat. And not just any boat, you need the quickest and the most luxurious boat in GTA. The Speeder. Ryan, it's made of wood. That is luxury for you, my sir. It's also got goat leather, in case you hadn't noticed on the seats. I, I forgot about that. The, the key to uh, successful ships is goat leather. Well, yeah, if you haven't got goat leather on your boat, are you really successful? That's a question you've got to ask yourself. Well, you've gone by boat. I'm going by car. Where's Sam? Uh-oh. Um, I don't think he's understood this. Sam? Hello. <laughs> Do you, do you not understand what we're trying to do here? What do you mean? Well, we're racing to Polito Bay. I'm in a car. Ryan's in a boat. You're on... Um, a Faggio. Yeah. Um, that's, it's not very quick. It's not very quick, no. Or luxurious. Yeah, all that. Or luxurious. But i tell you what it is. What? That's a plane. That's not a plane. No, that is not a plane. But this will take me to the airport, just over there, where my luxurious plane is waiting. So you're going by plane, then? Yes, I am. Okay. So we got car, plane, and boat. Uh, should be an interesting race. I guess that only leaves one thing. What's that? Let's go. Oh, Bye. He's gone. Right. Helmet safety. Come on. I'm off. Go. Come on. Power. Yes. This is how it should be. 
for the rest of the race, me in the lead. We're taking him with ease. Hey, except now, of course. That's why the car was such a great invention. No helmets to be put on. Just get in and you go. I basically just have to drive one straight line across the left side of Los Santos. Whereas Sam has to do his takeoff procedure in his plane. And. Wait a second, I don't even think Sam has a plane license, so that'll be interesting. Now, I should add as a rule of thumb, both Sam and I must obey traffic laws when in the city. Mainly for me, because when I get to Polito Bay, I'm going to have the struggle of traffic there and traffic in the city where I am now. I'm also going to have the issue of overtaking cars on the highway, or freeway, depending where I am in San Andreas. Okay, so the airport is a down for now. Now I have to take this very awful Faggio there, which is like the worst vehicle in the game. Anyway, could be worse. Oh, the lights are red! This isn't what I want! One of the key things to talk about is that I mentioned earlier that I have a fast boat, but I never talked about the exact figures, so I'll do that right now. The 0-60 is really fast, the top speed is incredibly fast, and the torque? Well, I'm not even sure if the boat has any torque. Just as you get through one pair of lights, the others turn green! Brilliant. Come on, FD2. Does this thing cost about like six or twelve grand, something like that? It's not worth money at all. It has about like one horsepower. It'll get you nowhere. You know what, actually? This challenge reminds me of a challenge that Tom and Dave did in the first season. But I can't quite remember much about it, to be honest. Are the producers really running out of ideas or ready for uh, challenges? Right. We are on the highway. Polito Bay, here we come. Right, so we just through these fences here, where my marvellous invention is waiting. This thing's got some legs, I mean it's got quite a lot of oomph to it. My issue is, is that it's quarter of a million dollars. And these days on GTA, I'm pretty sure for quarter of a million dollars you could get many other four-door saloon cars, especially as luxurious as this that can go as fast and be as comfortable and as well to drive. Which makes you question, why would you still buy one? Full speed under the pier, we're gonna make it! Oh, little scratch, little scratch. It's not like this is my own personal boat or anything and I've got to pay for that. So far, this race has been a two-way competition between Ryan and myself. However, what we didn't know is that Sam had just taken off in his plane. This is the Cuban 800, a twin-propelled plane. It hasn't got much of a fuselage, and it can only sit like, four people in it. It's a cracker of a plane. And we are already hitting traffic. Now, I can't overtake because there is no legal way of doing so, but I'm thinking that I'm going to cut in this lane as the truck is going quicker. Oh, this is ridiculous. Speed up! Uh-oh, is that Sam? That's Sam in his plane? It can't be. I hope not. I really hope that isn't Sam, because that means he's ahead of me already. But then again, he still has to land. Mercifully, the traffic eased, and I was finally able to put my foot down once again. Or so I thought. Oh no, no. Bloody hell. Just don't mind me. Yep. Overtaking. Thank you. I wonder where the other two are. I am how most women would say it, very wet right now. Sam, on the other hand, was still praising how amazing his plane was. Oh, and there's another thing. Ryan's boat and Tom's car can't do anything like this. So I wonder how Tom is doing on the highway in his fat whale of a car. Traffic! Oh, come on. We've got a buccaneer and a Washington. Oh, come on, speed up, please. Hopefully some form of uh, accident has occurred on the motorway which is causing Tom in a traffic jam. Which will slow him down and... Maybe Sam will run into a pigeon in the air, which may cause his plane engine to uh, to stop working. Now the difference between me and Ryan is that Ryan can land on that pier, coming up on the left of the plane on the beach. Whereas I have to land around the back of the petrol station on the beach. And from there, I have a special and cunning plan that the others probably won't expect. I'm about to pass the Ron gas tanks. Now, if I should be correct, Ryan is probably passing the canyon at this point. Sam, 
Who knows, either he's blown up or he's landed. And unfortunately for me, he landed. Right, we're nearing the top of the map now. We're nearly at Fleet of Bay. I need to absolutely gun it at this point. Okay, we are almost there. Break. Not that that does anything on land. Get out the boat. Go, 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 go. The idea is, is that I should call a taxi in. Because in the rules, it said I can't drive a car there. I am technically in the back of a taxi, not driving the car anywhere. I'm getting drove there. And there it is. And here we have it, our little surprise that I was talking about earlier. A quadricycle. Over there's the beach. That's where Sam's going to land. I do see a plane there. Is that it? There it is. Come on. Oh, rock. I can win rock. this. I can win this. I know I can. There's Ryan. That's Let's Ryan go, go, there. Go, 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 go. Come on. Have we made it? Have we made it? Come on. Come on. Have we made it? Are we here? All right, mate. How's win? it going? No. <laughs> no, Tom beat us. God damn it. Oh, oh there's no. Um, <laughs> and the, there is Sam. Um, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, the car is the best vehicle. Okay, be honest with me, though. How long have you been here for? About five seconds. <laughs> I still don't like how Tom won that race. You could obviously see in that film that the boat was the best. Ryan, you do know that this is a car show, mate. It's it's a good thing that the car won. But yet my taxi, which was a car, let me down. Th that's because it's a taxi. That th They're not real cars. It's in the same way that slippers aren't real shoes. Anyway, on that bombshell, it's time to end the show. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again in a few weeks' time. Goodbye. <laughs>